You guys can stay here today. <laughs> we have we have a, um, a a prayer in a bit, so um, I'm not gonna be going on this too long today. So um, let's get into the word. Father God, we give thanks and praise for you, and we bless you, Lord, that you are with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. We bless you, Lord, that you continue to show your blessings, show your favor in our lives, God. Thank you for your love, your compassion, and uh, your plan and purpose in our lives, God. Fulfill your will in our lives. We are here as your vessels, Lord. Use us in your kingdom. Fill us with your knowledge. Fill us with your wisdom. Fill us with your strength that we would renew our strength like eagles does and we will fly for your glory, Lord. And we will lift up your banner where every knee shall bow before that name, Father. We give you the glory for you are using us and uh, transforming us, Lord. We stand before you and before your word today that you would minister to us and uh, that you would Engulf us uh, with your revelation that we can move further in your will, in your kingdom, and to reap more benefits from you, Lord. Into your matchless hands we place ourselves and ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today, which is great uh, for us to be in the house of the Lord and... Anything that we can learn from God's word that would help us in a, in a good way. I know Fusion kids are also learning something in their uh, class also. Uh, I think they are learning the fruit of the spirit. And uh, um, I'm going to be going in line with that as well today. So I would like for you to um, stay with me and enjoy that. Maybe you could. If not, stay with me. <laughs> Anyway, all right. <clears throat> so God wants us and God needs us to bear fruit. He needs us to be uh, somebody who would bring him forth. He wants himself to be multiplied. He, 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 he shows that throughout his creation, throughout the Bible, throughout the old covenant, throughout the new covenant, we see him. He is replicating himself. And when God created man, he did not create him to be some nobody, but he created us to be like him. He created us in his image, says the word of God. So um, when he created us, um, it wasn't an accident. It was a purposeful invention of God. I am invented by God. I am created in his image and I have a purpose in me and for me. God did not create me to fill some uh, 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 fill the mass or you know uh, uh, things like that but he created me to fulfill his plan to fulfill his purpose on this earth and that's where Jesus when he comes to this earth he says ye are the light of this world salt of this earth he gives us that ability that, that, that uh, uh, capacity in us that we can influence you know part of the uh, Covenant Fusion Church uh, uh, outcome, like oh, as the name goes, the three things that God has given um, as, as outcomes for this church is to influence and to equip and to encourage. These are the three things we would be um, working in. These are the three things that the church will be working into every individual's life. As the pastor of the church, that is kind of like the vision of the church. What is the vision of the church? Is to influence, is to equip, and is to encourage. Be some of the people might say, oh, you don't, have the, you don't have the capacity to equip. Yes, we don't, but we have Jesus. He's the equipper. And uh, uh, it is you know, it, 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 what we do as a church, as his reps, as his, as his hands and feet, what we do is we present ourselves, we, we uh, give ourselves to him so he can do the job through us. Amen? I want to be somebody that, that God can use to help someone else. Would you agree? And, and um, 
uh, God gives the focus to us. Um, a, a, you know, Christian world is so driven, um, what I would call, like to call as a Mother Teresa syndrome. We are, we are so into that mindset like, oh, you should help others, you should help others. We should take care of others, which is true. You should, we should, that is part of our mission. That is what God has called us to be. But the truth is God wants uh, uh, to reach out to us first. Us. You know, if, if, if we are not sound, we cannot help the society around. That is why our Christian gospel is so ineffective. Because we are trying to hurry ourselves in trying to teach others, to disciple others, to help others without us going through the process of how God trains us, God equips us, God anoints us. We don't give time for that. When we don't give time for God to work in us and we are trying to work for others, you will get drained. That's where we, many of the Christians lives, I have seen the many of them, brothers and sisters, they're miserable. When the, when, when the source of courage is with us, when somebody who is joy is with us, we are still struggling in our lives. That's, that's not how it should be. Amen? That is not how God wanted us to be. That is not what God has ordained us to be. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I praise Jesus. Good for you. Is Jesus alive in you? Is Jesus working for you? That's the most important thing. And when this fruit of the Spirit comes forth, that fruit, when, as much as we talk about using it for others, you need to do it for yourself. You know, you are your own guinea pig. When you are trying to trying to uh, try something new or something uh, uh, that you want to be presented to others, what would you do? You have to work on the samples first. You are your sample. The best sample you can have is you. Can you love yourself? Can you, can you be with you? You know, when we get that uh, going, then we will be able to reach out to others. Don't you agree with me? The biggest struggle these days uh, is um, somebody having their crisis of self-identity, self-reliance. We have way too many things that are out, out, out there. When, you, when, when we can't believe in ourselves, when we can't uh, uh, m m uh, believe that we can do this, when we can't be there, can you, how can you expect the world to change? And that's where God has given us the commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. The first part of the commandment is to love ourselves. And God's spirit, he gives, he gave the, the, the fruit of the spirit that would, that would benefit the body of Christ, that would benefit all of us. And the purpose of that is to glorify him. And... Uh, And to glorify God, and and because of that love, um, when, when the, under the fruit of the spirit, there is no law, there are no rules, there are no uh, uh, no speed limits for it. When you get under law, there is no condemnation. There, when you get under the the fruit of the spirit, there is no condemnation. What a freedom we can have, guilt-free life. Can you imagine that? That can only happen here. When we are walking in the fruit of the spirit. Not under the fruit of the flesh. And that's when God is talking, us, talking to us about the fruit of the spirit. He is not restricting us. Rather he is setting us free. He is giving us the freedom. Man walk in this thing. So there is nothing that can really control you. There is nothing that can point fingers toward you. The devil cannot accuse us when we walk in the fruit of the spirit. When we are living in this, he doesn't have any foothold over us. It, in a way, it is an incognito mode where the devil cannot see any details of us. How can you say that? I want you to think of uh, that for a moment. When Jesus, 
I was walking in the streets. Um, one of the times, not one of the times, there are multiple times you would see the people all around him got so mad about the things that he was teaching. They wanted to literally throw, throw stones at him and kill him. They grabbed stones. The Bible says he walked through them. And when, you know, you know very well, if a mob, I grew up in a land where if you do something wrong, you will get mob justice. You don't go to courtrooms, you don't go to the police, you get mob justice. If somebody were to hit you on the road for wrongly, wrong reasons, you, you are done. They'll stop you and they will beat you. And, and, and imagine this 2,000 ago, years ago in that culture. So um, they were ready to kill him. They weren't kidding. They were ready to kill him. As a matter of fact, you see that after Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected, you see Paul was stoned almost to death. They thought he was dead and he, they leave him there. Even the disciples, one other disciple, you see them being dead because they were stoned to death. And, and in such a culture, when everybody was ready to stone him, he walks through them, says the word of God. What I would like to call it as an incognito mode. He was there, but there were no traces of him. Because he was walking in the fruit of the spirit. He was fully covered in it that nothing, no weapon that was formed against him shall be able to prosper. And this is exactly why we need to focus on bearing this fruit. There are so many things the devil is trying to hit us with. So many things that he is trying to attack us with. How you can es es escape them? Live in the fruit of the spirit. Bear that fruit and you will escape them. Amen. This is our escape uh, way out for us. Uh, today, uh, uh, the main thing that we study in that Galatians um, fifth chapter, we see the fruit of the spirit is love. Is love. He starts there, is love. Everything comes out of it. Everything else comes out of love. So love is the most prominent thing and the most important thing that you and me need for us to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. Because love's, love uh, stems or love gives birth to all the other things. So that's why I keep pondering and uh, I keep going back and again and again to that love. And today also I will take some more time, some more time for us to ponder a little bit more on this love. Because this is so important. This is what brings uh, um, the kingdom of God on this earth. So go with me to the book of um, uh, 1 Corinthians. I know Liz probably will have fun. Go with me to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 12th chapter. Starting at 31st verse, 12th chapter, 31st verse, it says, But earnestly desire the best gifts. He's talking ab about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to desire that. You know, these days, this is a sad thing. The church have become so complacent, they don't even talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is part of the Bible. We need those gifts. The gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of prophecy, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gift of healing. All those gifts are there, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Bible says for us to desire them. Desire the best. Desire the best gifts from the Holy Spirit. You know, I, told, uh, I, I, I always say this thing, I always repeat myself over and over again until it gets drilled into our head. If you don't have a desire... God cannot give it to us. If you don't desire for you to be well, if you don't desire to be filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if you don't desire for you to be healed, healed if you don't desire for yourself to be prosperous, no, 
God is never going to force himself into your life. If you don't desire yourself to be delivered, no. Forget it. God needs your desire before he can work in our lives. How much do you want this? Every single miracle Jesus performed while he was on this earth. He asked, what do you desire? What do you want? When you don't know what you want, give me something good, Lord. Who, what are you talking about? Now, what do you desire? You have to have the desire. I need this to be fixed. And when we desire that, we will have it. He says here, but honestly, desire the best gifts. And at, I show you a more excellent way. You know, gifts are so important. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are so important. We need to desire them. He gives that instruction to us. And then he says, yet I will show you a more excellent way. He's not talking about gifts anymore. A lifestyle. He talks about a lifestyle now. He's moving from gifts. Gifts are something that work for you every now and then. Whenever the Holy Spirit chooses Whenever you come in agreement with whichever gift is needed, then it will be used. But he is talking about an excellent way, a higher way, a lifestyle. I'm going to present that to you guys. And then goes to the 13th chapter. Go with me to the 13th chapter. I'm going to read the 13th chapter from Amplified Bible. Uh, the reason I, I encourage you all, uh, if you uh, want to study the word of God, I encourage you all uh, to get an Amplified Bible. It's a good study Bible. I, I like to study the Word of God through that. It, it is so good. It, it, it helps me. So I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible while you go through um, the regular version if you don't have Amplified. If I can speak in tongues of men and even of angels but have not love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us. This is the definition of love. What is love? I don't know if you know this song or not. I used to like this song so much. What is love? I used to sing it and be, be all excited about it. But I'm not going to sing to help you out for your sake. There you go. <laughs> Uh, thank God for that. <laughs> so, uh, what is love? That reasoning, look at this, reasoning, love has reason. Okay? The, 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 the scripture says, for God so loved the world. The reason is present there. It provides reasoning for us. And reasoning, and then what? Intentional. It is intentional. It is not a feeling. I need to take a pause there. It is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. I don't feel like loving him. Shut up. Because love is not a feeling. It is an intention. You create an intention. You, you, you can't say, oh, I, I don't feel, you, you, you don't know what all they did. No, no, no. It doesn't, love doesn't have that. Love doesn't have that face. Love doesn't have the, those, those strings. It is intentional. It doesn't matter who that person might be, who it might be. I'm talking about you. You can be intentional toward you. It can be intentional towards you. I mean, that's why I encourage everybody who, who struggles with that confidence or anything like that. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell to you that God loves you. It should be intentional. When you look into the eyes of your children, when you, do, when you look into the eyes of your spouse, when you're trying, let it be intentional. Spiritual devotion. This is a devotion. Love is a devotion. It is not, uh, like I said, it is not a feeling. It is not a comfort. And it's, it's a devotion. And 
spiritual devotion such as is inspired by God's love. Inspired by God's love for us and in us. You have to identify that. Oh, many people just stop at the point that God loves me. Now, Bible says that same God love is in you. That love of God is in us. So that's what God is trying to tell. If you receive, do you, did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Is Jesus the love or not? Jesus is the love, right? Jesus doesn't have love. Don't ask that question, do you have love for me? No, he doesn't. He is love. He is. And God doesn't love me. How can you say that God himself is love? Amen? See, the, the, this is where the devil tries to put all those false teachings into our head. And this devotional love inspired by God's love for and in us. I'm only a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. This, way, this, is, this is the place where he is not belittling the gifts. But he is saying, if you want them to be effective, if you want them to work appropriately in your life, you need this force of love. You need this lifestyle, lifestyle of love. You need to make this a habitual living. A love. We, we, we choose to love. We choose to. We, we, we are intentional about this thing. And if you have prophetic powers. Second verse. The gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. Isn't that stunning gift? To be able to interpret the will of God. And understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge. And if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, won't that be a great faith to have? Faith to move the mountains? Even though if you have faith to move the mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Come on, church. I, I want us to be useful. I want Jesus to use me. I want to be that person where God can say, I, I, I need you. God can depend on me to use me. Anybody here prays that God use me? Amen. The kids, I'm here to ask you the same question. Do you want God to use you? Amen. If you want God to use you, this is how we can be useful. If we are not operating in love, God can never use us. I want to be a useful vessel for God, not a vessel that is there. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food. Well, look at this. The good deeds. And if I surrender my body to be burned. Or in order that I may glory. But have not love. God's love in me. I gain nothing. I gain nothing. Nada. He goes. He, he, it's like even to the point you can give up everything that you might have. I want to go, go, go at it in a different direction also. Even though you might be giving, you may not be doing it in love. Many people I have seen, many people they give because uh, there is a need. Because there is some kind of a lack around us. Or because they pity themselves, uh, other people. I'm here to tell you that kind of giving gains you nothing. When you give it to yourself, when you give it to your spouse, when you give it to your children, you don't do it because they are helpless. You don't do it because you want to show pity to them. No, no, no. You give them because you love them. 
Why would I forgive somebody? Oh, that is, no, no, no. Nobody needs to be deserving your forgiveness. I give them because I love them. Game over. I'm moving on. Now it explains. Love endures long. And is patient. And kind. Love never is envious. Nor boils over with jealousy. Is not boastful. Or vainglorious. Does not display itself heartily. It is not conceited. Arrogant. And inflated with pride. I have to take a moment there to talk a little bit about pride. Pride is not what we think is pride. Pride is not depending on God. As simple as that. If somebody is not depending on God. If you think you can handle it. You are being prideful. As simple as that. If you think you know it. You are being prideful. Not depending on God is pride. When I am saying, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me, I'm not being prideful, I am being humble. When I am saying, I am the righteousness of God, I'm not being prideful, I am being humble. Amen. Let it sink, it. Let it sink again and again. When we are lining up with what God's word says and what God's will says, we are being humble, not prideful. But when we are not bowing before God and you might sit in the lowest places or you might call yourself worthless or whatever you want to do, you are being prideful. You know, when God calls you, you are the righteousness of God. And you call yourself, I'm, not, I'm a worthless worm. What is it? That is being prideful. When God says, you deserve all my love. That's why I sent my son to the cross. When God says so, you say, God, I don't deserve that. I stay in guilt. I stay in this shame. I stay in, stay in this condemnation. What are you being? I might be stepping on some of you all's toes, but it's okay. It's all in love. Let's get over it. So we can, we can let this love work in us. It, 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 it is not, not prideful. It is, it is the love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils with over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not di display itself haughty. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude and does not act unbecomely. I'm, 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 I'm going to take one more minute there and talk about rude. What is rude? Today, uh, the age we live in with this PC culture so uh, much trying to control our lives what is happening even for you to witness even for you to witness that Jesus is the only way is being considered as rude is being considered as considered as bigotry and now now the, the, the is that what bible is saying what would be rude is if I know somebody is dying and if I'm not telling them that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, that is being rude. We need to understand this. We need to be bold about preaching the gospel. Oh, I'm, I might hurt their feelings. Who cares? They will be dead for eternity if you don't share the gospel. It is important these days we are so much struggling in our society. There is no exchange of thought. There is no exchange of ideology. This is my world. Don't touch my world. Nobody can say otherwise. You know what? By that you are stopping your growth. You can never grow unless your thoughts are challenged. Unless your positions are challenged. You can never ever grow unless your faith is challenged. I'm going to repeat that again. You can never grow unless your faith is challenged. 
I need it. We need it. We need it. It is sign of growth. You will be challenged. You will be tested. That's why the word of God says, consider it joy when you are tested, tempted. When you are going through trials, consider it all joy. Because your faith is at work. It is working now. It is not just sitting out there. Your faith is put to work. You need, we have to, we are, we always need to be willing. My son comes to me complaining, saying, oh, daddy, this kid said that. This kid did that. I'm like, they have every right to do so. They are bullying you. Yes, they have every right to bully you. But you have the right to stand for yourself. I'm not going to stop the other person from doing that to you. That is not how God wants you to operate. There, God is not stopping the devil today for us. He is the big bully out there. He is not going to stop him. He wants you to know your authority. He wants you to know your place and position. And stand in front of him and tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. That is what God wants us to be. That is what God needs us to be. Get up. And take, take our position. Take our authority. I don't belong in this mess. I don't belong in this addiction. I don't belong in this depression. I don't belong here. I'm getting myself out of this in the name of Jesus. I am out of it. Adios. Death. Adios depression. That should be our, our, our thing. You know doing so. What are we doing? We are not being rude. We are being honest. We are being truthful. God needs us to be so. When I am talking to myself and saying, I can overcome this thing. I can overcome this kind of a lifestyle. Then, then what are we doing? We, we are putting ourselves in a place where we can win the battle. Oh, if I exchange my thought, what, what they would think? They would think any which way. Just because you didn't talk to them. Don't think they don't have an opinion about you. Everybody in the world has opinions about us. If you let everybody talk to you. They will tell you thousand and one suggestions. I probably heard a thousand suggestions about how to raise my kid. I barely listen to them. Because at the end I am responsible for my child. I need to listen from God. If someone is bringing the voice of God into my life, I'd rather be humble. I'm be, I should be ready to be corrected. Amen? Everyone has opinions. Everyone has the right to mess me. Everyone has the right to bully me. I'm not going to fight their right. What I'm going to fight is fight for my right. My right is to protect myself. My right is to stay humble with God. My right is to stay right with God. My right is to tell people that Jesus is the only way. That is my right. I will tell them whether they like it or not. I will argue with them highways or byways. Because this is the truth. Whatever they believe, they believe. They will go to hell according to the Bible. Uh, a love. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights. Look at this. On its own rights. Our own rights. Our own things. Because I chose God's will. If it is my own will, I don't want to mess with anybody. Dude, you want to go to hell? Go to hell, dude. But that is not what God's will is. That is not what God has planned for us. And we move from that. You have to tell yourself the same thing. When you are going through this self-pity. When you are going through this struggle. When you are going through those times. You have to tell yourself. Body, you don't belong here. The same way David told himself. He says, what does he say? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He tells his own soul. You do not belong here. Bless him. Bless him. Get out of this mess. He is telling himself. To get out. We need to do the same thing through to our thoughts, to, to our afflictions, to whatever is trying to pull us down. We need to tell it, I don't belong here. That is what love is. Amen? Love is not just making you feel, okay, 
Are you comfortable, CC? Are you comfortable, ma'am? I no, no, no. That's not about. That's not what love is. Love transforms. Love changes. And that's what that's what the love is about. And it goes on. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy. Look at this. How many touchy people we have these days? You can't even tell them they are wrong. You can't even tell them they, 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 uh, uh, that, that what you're doing is not going to work. You can't tell them that, ma'am, ma ma you're not walking in right standing with God. You can't even tell them. The guys, the, it's not just with the younger generation. No matter what kind of a generation, we have become so uh, uh, the touchy people. Where God cannot convict us, we are, we are so bound in our ways. But whereas the love liberates us from that. I won't be touchy. God give me some conviction. Correct me. Whatever it is. Whomever God loves. The word says. He chastises them. He corrects them. He gives them direction. He gives them influence. How many are open for that? Forget about younger kids. The teenagers these days are like. They think every, they know everything in the world. They are unteachable. I, I know everything. Next thing you know, their life is a mess. Why would mama, mama get worried about the daughter? Because mama was in that mess. That's why he, she doesn't want the daughter to go through that mess. That's why he, she doesn't want the son to go through that mess. We, we do that so much. To help others. But, but we, are so con, con, we, we, are, we are so confined to this, this uh, setup. Where we are so touchy. Uh, we, are, we are not even willing to let somebody have an honest opinion about us. They can't say that. Are we there? If we are there, we are not walking in love. We are not in love. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Come on, y'all. This should liberate us right there. It is not touchy. It is not going to keep account of what happened to it. It moves on. It learns how to brush off. It learns it because it knows, it understands it, it has a bigger mission than being stuck in that miry clay. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when the right and the truth prevail. Love bears up under anything, everything that comes. Come on, love gives us that bearing capacity, man. Whatever we might be going through, how can you pull it through? Because I am in love. How can you do this kind of crazy things? Because I am in love. How can you pat yourself? How can you tell yourself that you are going to do well? Because you're in love. Amen. It goes on. Love bears up on, under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes and fails under circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. Never fades out or become, becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will or purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be uh, superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and the perfect, the total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void and superseded. It's talking about love and self. Love needs to take over us. But, but when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and put, a, put them aside. What is that now that he is talking about? 
what makes you a man what makes you a grown up what makes you an adult not your age not the money you make not what you know what you don't know it is your love how much of a love you are carrying with you how much can you, i'm i'm not going to ask you how much you are going to love your neighbor how much are you going to love yourself when we don't get to that understanding when we don't get to that point we will always be falling short let us not waste our time measuring with all other stupid measuring sticks that are out there let us measure ourselves with the love this unconditional love of god for me because i received jesus christ into my life this love has come into my life there is nothing that can stop me god loves me right now right here right where i am god's love is working in me god's love is working through me where god's love is making this work for me when we can walk in that we have grown if we can't walk in that no we are not if you want me to tell you how much of a christian you are show me your love walk show me how much of a love you are oozing out of you my my cup runneth over how much of it is running over you yourself are not filled how can you run it over i reason like a child now that i have become a man i am done with childish ways and have put them aside we still live like a child these days we are still walking in our flesh we are still bearing the fruit of the flesh and by bearing those things what are we doing we are still being childish we are still being childish for now uh we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim blurred reflection of real reflection of reality as in the riddle or enigma but then when perfection comes when love comes we shall see in reality and face to face now i know in part imperfectly but when i shall know and understand fully and clearly even in the same manner as i have been fully and clearly known and understood by god isn't that a stunning thing how can you know knowing god's will for your life it's all linked back to love it's all connected to love what is the will of you know many people struggle knowing the will of god many of us struggle i encourage you get back to the love of god that's where you will find that's where you will find the will of god many people who struggle in finding what god's ways are god's will are they are out of love i bet you all i have they are out of love they are not walking in god's love when they are not when they when they don't have that active love in them they cannot find what god's will they are always struggling they are always cutting corners they are always trying to find something else they are always trying to find excuse the big problem for them is they do not accept the love of god for themselves they do not accept the love of god in themselves that is the true struggle when they can get that through when they can get into that when we can get into that we will see clearly we can see the eyes that can he- see and the ears that can hear they will be opened only through love amen now he comes to the conclusion now and and so faith hope love abide faith which is the conviction and belief respecting man's relation to god and divine love um, divine things hope joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation love true affection of god and man growing out of god's love for and in us these three these three will abide these three will be there forever get used to it when you go to heaven this is what we will be living by the heaven and earth will pass away these things will not faith 
hope and love those three things will be with us forever get used to it when you go to heaven don't think you need don't need to walk by faith you have to walk by faith the just shall live by faith forever you are just you are living by faith hope and expectation it is always going to be there forever for us and then the third thing is love it is going to be forever and then he says but the greatest of all these is love if you are aiming at love if you are trying to improve your love walk if you are trying to get after it what are you doing you are having the greatest thing that is that is here and that is in heaven no matter where you go you got the best if you are somebody who desires for the best and not go for a compromise this is the way to go this is the only way to go love the affection that god has for us and in us i want us to draw it out i want us to depend on it i want us to rely on it so it can bring the magic or the miracle that god has planned for us i don't want to miss out on that i don't want to miss out on that i don't want you to miss out on it life is exciting when we are in love imagine that the struggles will come and they don't bother you you can just walk through that struggle because you're in love Can you imagine that? You know, you're expecting to not have struggles, but God is saying those struggles doesn't even have a power. I gave you a power that is beyond that. Those things are insignificant be be before what I have given you. Adapt to it. Lean to it. Lean on to it. Become intentional. I'm going to love myself today, man. be intentional i'm going to love myself today i'm going to blow me a kiss i don't need nobody blowing me a kiss i'm going to blow myself a kiss who is there to stop me from kissing me nobody everybody can hate me all they want to but i'm going to kiss myself i'm happy cuz god's love is in me god loves me god resides in me I'm happy for myself. I'm happy with myself. I'm in so madly loving with me that I can't contain but to give it to others. Amen. May the Lord increase our revelation on that. God bless you.